Hey, this is Richard Patrick from Filter, and you're watching Loudwire. Scott, uh, Scott suffered from a disease that I, I suffer from, um, I, addiction. Addiction runs rampant in our part of uh, music. Um, there's something about the singer or the personality in the band where you get addicted to drugs. I don't know what it is. Um, I have ADHD. Uh, I get overwhelmed by things because it's like I have all these movie screens playing something. So, you know, in my early, you know, in my teen years, I started drinking and I could squelch that and calm it down. Um, and then, you know, I found uppers, you know, later on to kind of control my thinking, you know. And, uh, you know, when you go to a psychiatrist, you know, later in life, they go, hey, well, these are the reasons why you did that, you know, and you can control that stuff. Um, that was my journey, and I got sober 13 years ago, and I was, like, I was very serious about it. I took it very seriously because I couldn't function as the alcoholic that I was. But the, the thing with addiction is it's a self-diagnosed disease. So if you don't know you're an addict or you're not willing to deal with it, you're going to die. And I saw the writing on the wall. There was clearly neurological damage uh, in him falling off the stage. There was, there was some pills involved. Like in my heart, I was like, That's, I can tell he's pilled out. And I just saw enough that it was like someone had done an interview, and I kind of forgot the tape recorder was on. And I was at a point on a tour with another band, and the lead singer was found in a car, uh, passed out with a heroin needle in his arm. They were opening up for us, and the band played without him, and I was very frustrated that this really amazing singer was passed out in a car, and his mother was at the gig, too. He borrowed his mother's car to go get dope. He told her he was getting guitar strings, which everyone knows we get guitar strings for free, and he passed out in this car, and his mother's like, where is he? Where's my son? You know, and it's horrible. It's ho addiction is the most disgusting thing. And um, so I was livid about that. And I said, what is with the amount of crap that Stone Temple Pilots is getting for trying to have a singer that at least can show up on time and sing the shows? You know, Chester Bennington w was in Stone Temple Pilots for a year and a half or so. And, you know, the amount of hate that they were getting on their own Facebook feed from their own fans, hate towards Chester and, you know, mad at the DeLeo brothers for, for just trying to have a normal career. And um, all this support, obviously that kind of stuff is going to tell the addict, like, see, you know, they're, they're, they're almost enabling this. And the audience, we can't have the audience just enable him to his grave, and I literally said that. Like, we can't enable him. We have to focus on trying to help him. And I said it in that. I was a little taken aback when Blabbermouth reposted it, and then it became this thing, and Scott started responding to it. But I've known Scott my whole life, and he's right. We used to party like motherfuckers, and it was great. I went to places in my mind with drugs I'll never be able to go to again, but I understand that. It was okay when I was in my 20s and it worked, but we're dude, we're far beyond, like we've both learned a lot, like you can't go back there anymore, like certain things are done. And he wasn't getting that and that's why he passed away because it's a disease that kills 95% of us. You know, I could, be 20, I could be sober for 20 years, have a drink, go crash a car and die from that, I died an alcoholic death, you know what I mean? So. Uh, you know, the whole thing is, is that I've, I've wanted to see him at the, at the risk of sounding like a gym teacher, which is the last fucking thing I want to sound like. I, you know, I don't want to sound like, dude, come on. You know, I'm not that guy. But I truly thought that maybe if, if everyone just kept sending him messages like, dude, because I, I got it from one person. One person said, you are a fucking alcoholic. You're a piece of shit. If you ever fucking talk to me like that again, I'll kill you. You know what I mean? And that, and it was a girl. You know what I mean? It was like this girl I knew from high school. 
and I, I made an ass out of myself. But that one message on my answering machine sent me into rehab, and it was enough. It was the, it was the final push over the cliff that helped me to get it. And you know, my mother, all the close relatives couldn't get me there. This one girl from high school told me I was, I was out of control. And so that, if you just keep sending the bottom line to your friends that are alcoholics, it hopefully can save them. It saved me. I'm living proof. And so I feel that's the story with Scott. He's going to be remembered, hopefully, for plush. And Tiny Music is literally one of my favorite records of all time. Uh, you know, and I worked with the DeLeo brothers. I did a band with them called Army of Anyone. I'm fully aware of how amazing the DeLeo brothers are. And so Stone Temple Pilots must be remembered for the amount of work that they did and, and, and even the new stuff with, with, with Chester. <laughs>